Good morning, everybody. For our Adventist family, I would say happy Sabbath. And for some of our friends who are joining us for the very first time, we want to extend a warm welcome. But you know what? This is just part of our song service. So I'm going to invite you to stand with us. Hey, eh? Can you stand with us before I invite my elder, John, to welcome you officially? But this song here is to God be the glory as a way to call for worship and allowing others who are outside to come and join in. But let's all sing together. The purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear him. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give Him the glory, great things He hath done. Great things He hath taught us, great things He hath done. And great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son, the purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus. Let's all say, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give Him the glory, great things He has done. You may be seated. this one on? Yep. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. It was great to see all of the visitors here this morning. And my family was late, so uh, held a few things up, but <laughs> but they're here. Um, it's a high day in our church today. We've got a baptism of uh, Aunt and uh, Betty, and uh, we're just so joyful for that uh, on this occasion. And uh, uh, Betty and Aunt, wherever you are, <laughs> um, Look, it's the greatest step you'll ever take in your life, I believe. Um, look, uh, sorry, John. <laughs> okay. Um, look, uh, I know, aunt especially, um, parts of my family, they know what I was like beforehand. And, um, you know, what I'm like now, I'm nowhere near perfect, but God has changed me. And I'll tell you what, that's the best evidence for God. Um, yeah, it's just so, uh, such a blessing to be a Christian and to uh, give your life to to God on this day, so um, yeah, to every nation, kindred, um, I especially saw that this morning when I was looking at that, and uh, I thought, well, kindred, it's it's family, so uh, that's a really good mission field for for everyone to start to start with your family, and it's so good to see um, 
know some results of that. So uh, anyway, um, oh, we've got one announcement tomorrow. We've got a working bee, seven till nine. Make sure you turn up. There's a little bit to tidy up outside, but um, yeah. So uh, if you can come along for that, so thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Happy Sabbath. We thank God for guiding everyone here to leave his home and to come here to worship God. And God is great always. God has allowed us to come here. You know, we are Adventist, Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are not Adventist, but we are Seventh-day Adventist because there is Adventist, but we who have special name, we are Seventh-day Adventist. So I just want to welcome everyone. I see the church is near to be full. This is God who do that. God allow us to come to, to support our sisters who will born the second today. God is great. And uh, I welcome visitors from different location who are coming to, to be with us. And I invite them also to come next Sabbath and the next Sabbath. And if possible, to come full members of Papengari SDA Church. I invite also my families here. I just can, I can change a little bit in, in my Kirundi because my family doesn't speak English. Ndabahai ikaze hanemuri Papengari SDA Church. Nishengiroja Papengari, sorry. So this is Kirundi. Just to welcome them, they are here two weeks ago, so God is great. And uh, this is time before I welcome the deaconess to collect the building offering. Let's bear and pray. Heaven Father, we thank you so much for your mercy. We thank you so much for your love. And we thank you so much for your blessings. This time, everyone here is going to give and build your, your home. We thank you and we show you everyone here and blessing our church, blessing uh, our family. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I invite deaconess to collect building offering. Church family, I'm going to invite you to stand with us, and we're going to sing this song, Great is Thy Faithfulness, and it's a reminder that we serve a mighty and a God who is loving, but is also faithful when we are unfaithful. Let's all sing us together, and let's lift our voices.
Let's just have the ladies. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest. Sun, moon and stars and their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I see. have all the men. Pardon for sin and the peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings on mine and ten thousand beside great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see all I have needed thy hand hath provided great is thy Heavenly Father, great is your faithfulness. Father, we have come to join together in your name. We thank you for this opportunity. Father, you see before us Louise and Betty. You have guided their footsteps to this day, just as you have guided many in this room. Father, this world is a difficult world to navigate and we can't navigate it successfully without your help. And so thank you for being there for us. Father, I pray in particular that Louise and Betty, as they follow in your footsteps, that they will feel your presence with them. Please help us to be your example to them also. You have shown us how to love. You sent Jesus to earth as a babe. And then as he grew, he showed us your example for us to follow. Then Jesus left the comforter, your Holy Spirit, to guide us. We are not alone and we thank you for this. Heavenly Father, I pray that we can all join now in saying the prayer that Jesus taught us to say together. Our Father, which art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this point of time, I am going to invite the partial team to come up. And we're also going to invite um, Louise. I'm going to get you to come stand right here. I'm going to read some vows. So I want you to stand here, my friend. Many of us know her as Betty, but believe it or not, her real name, her born identity is Juris Peggy. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So I think we've all known her as uh, Betty but it's Juris, all right? That name's only given to special people, so count it. You are special, amen? So, you know, we come to this point. Today is a high day. It's a beautiful day because baptism is not the end of the race. It's only the beginning. And uh, we have both Louise and Juris, Peggy, Betty, who have responded to the call of God. We had some time that we spent and uh, we shared, we went through some vows. But this morning, to show their love and their commitment to God and before our church family and friends, I am only going to read three, which encompasses all that is required to follow Jesus every day of your life. And so I'm going to read the, the three vows on this particular statement, on the certificate that you will take away and that you are reminded of this day. And so the first baptismal commitment vow is this. I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior and Lord, and I desire to live my la life in a saving relationship with Him. Number two. I accept the teachings of the Bible as express, as in the statement of fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and I pledge by God's grace to live my life in harmony with these teachings. And you've had some time to go through it, and if you forget inside this baptismal certificate, you can refresh your memory every now and again and what that actually means. Number three, I desire to be baptized as a public expression of my belief in Jesus Christ to be accepted into the fellowship of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and to support the church and its mission as a faithful steward by my personal influence, tithes and offerings, offering a life of service. And Later on, after the baptism, we as a church family, we will vote you into membership. So after these commitment vows that I've just shared, how do you both respond? <laughs> I accept. I accept. I accept. Nice and quiet. Church family and friends, would you say Amen to acknowledge that you two are happy because of the decision that they have made. And you know what, believe it or not, God was working in their lives already. But here they are just publicly declaring that commitment as a visible sign to God and to his church family here. And so we're glad um, that you've made that decision. And I'm going to hand the mic over to Pastor Umberto, and he's going to pray a special prayer of blessing on you both. And we're going to lay hands. So we're going to get you to stand right here. And I'm going to invite Alda. Yep, Louise. Good girl. Okay. Jean. 
this is so so wonderful to see these two new members of the church, not yet, but they're going to be seated very soon. Let's just bow your heads, all of you, please, and then we're going to pray for them. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. We just already prayed that prayer. But also this morning, Betty and Luisa are coming before you, before the church, to commit their lives to follow and obey the Lord Jesus. May the life of Luisa and Betty from this moment be a living testimony to those that will come to know you through their actions and words. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and your great love for us sinners who seek repentance and be born again and follow Jesus. Father in heaven, I ask that you bless Betty and all the church here. Say amen, please. And Luisa, because they make the decision and we need to help them to remain faithful to you in every step of the way. We know that this is the beginning, is not the end of the Christian life. Because we may make some mistake, but the Lord Jesus is always there for us to confess our sin and to repent. Bless them, Father. Be with them. Be close to them. Give them wisdom to understand and follow the instruction you are word. Because today people just make decisions, but they don't read your word. And then we need to follow and be obedient. Bless them, Father, with that particular wisdom. Give them also the ability to understand and share with others. May the blessing of the Holy Spirit be always close to them in the beginning of this new life with you. And I pray and I thank you because you touch their hearts and they, they make a response to you to follow you closely. Bless us all, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we are going to be blessed with a special item um, from Juris and her best friend here at Brooklyn Gary St. Adventist Church, Tabora. So we're going to invite you both to come. song is actually um, written for Betty. Um, it's called Jesus, I give you my heart and my song. So um, it's for her big day. Sending you away, but just as you promised, you come to stay. I just had to pray, Jesus said, Come to the water, stay by my side. I know. A 
minstrels to remind you that for those here inside the Jesus, I give you my heart and my soul. For I know that without you, I could never be whole. I came so close into sending you away. But just as you promised, Stay. I just had to pray, and Jesus said, "Come to the water, stay by my side. I know you are thirsty; you won't be denied." And when I found I stroll to remind you that for those tears I die, and I stroll to remind you that for those tears I die. Amen. Before we start, one of the things that, uh, that we get from Scripture is that in Matthew 28, Jesus, the King, made a command, a commission, and he says, All authority has been given to me on heaven, in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of Jesus, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all things. And then he concludes by saying, As you can see, we don't only have Betsy in the font, but we have Tabora. Tabora's not going to get rebaptized. <laughs> I've invited her in here because Tabora has discipled Betsy. And, and, and that's the challenge that I want to give out for our church family to take that commission seriously to go and.
Happy Sabbath, everyone. Awesome. Um, yeah, so just give you a little bit of testimony of myself um, and how I came about to being here in this waters. Um, so I was very fortunate that I had a Christian family and a Christian upbringing. Uh, my grandmother and my great-grandmother, they were Seventh-day Adventists. Um, and then I had um, my dad's parents who were pastors of Methodists and um, my mum's siblings who were also pastors, um, sharing the gospel, you know, reaching out to people around the world um, and, you know, letting them know that there was a saviour named Jesus um, and also delivering his message to them. Um, but despite um, my upbringing, um, as I grew older um, in my teens and my 20s, I started to slowly, uh, little by little, fade away from, from God. And then I felt sucked into the world. I enjoyed my old life while I thought I had everything. I, um, you know, fell into habits and um, addictions, um, you know, and then I started um, doing all the wrong things like everybody else was doing, just followed my friends where they went clubbing, I went to. Um, it wasn't until 2018 I fell into a deep, dark hole. I found myself that I couldn't get out after I lost my husband in a car accident. And I couldn't get myself out. I was so desperate for God to help me. I had family around me. I had friends. They were comforting me. They had sympathy, but it wasn't enough. I lost my spirit. I lost all hope. I started to turn my life and I wanted to I wanted to reach out to God. I was so desperate for him. I needed I needed him to fill my spirit again. I wanted to become a living being again. So I started to do some research and it led me to a Christian store, the ABC, Seven Day Adventist ABC store here at um, Darkabin or Narangba. And, um, and that's how I met Te Pora um, after going there for a couple of weeks, months, weeks turned into months. And I kept going to this Christian store. It was almost like the Holy Spirit was trying to draw me close to him. And I started researching and I wanted to find answers about life and death. Um, you know, I, um, even though I was brought up as Christian, I wasn't following God. I, I left him behind. Um, then I met Tepora and she introduced me to this church here. Um, we only exchange, of, um, we only exchange messages, um, uh, once. She gave me the address, the time when the service starts. And it didn't, um, I didn't actually react to it until maybe a couple of weeks later I decided that I'll come. I'll come this time. I think I was ready. But I was nervous at the same time coming into this church not knowing who these people are. They were all strangers to me. They don't know anything about my life in the past. But I felt that God was actually... Yeah, um, I just felt that there was something here that I didn't want to miss out on. I didn't want to turn my back on either. Um, as I continued to come here, I felt intrigued and in love by everybody that was here. They had open arms. They had big hearts, just like Jesus did. Um, and that's why I continued to come here. Then I started doing Bible study with Te Pora. And the more I got into God's word, the more I was drawn into it. I couldn't turn my, I couldn't leave it. 
I couldn't just like walk away from it. It was there for me. For some reason, it was like, you know, there was a message there for me that you can't go back. Don't turn your back. Keep going. Um, and then I encountered a dream. Long story short, sorry. Um, long story short, um, the water's getting cold now. <laughs> long story short, um, I had encountered two dreams. The first dream I had was a vision, um, but I'll give you the details if you want to know more about it. But the voice said to me, I love you. Don't leave me. Again. Um, and that was three days later, I had another dream. I encountered, the Bible was open, and the scripture that it showed me was Matthew 28, which is what um, Pastor Francis just mentioned. I, I read that chapter before, but there was something telling me to go back and read it. You didn't read it properly. You just skimmed through it. And as I read the very first verse, it mentioned the Sabbath. I just brushed it off like it was any other day. But it was his Sabbath. Um, and as I continue to read, it, the story goes on about his resurrection. Um, if you go and read that chapter. Um, and then the last, as it comes towards the very end, it mentions the baptism. So that's why I'm here today. On his Sabbath, being baptized, accepting him as my Lord and Saviour. And to be cleansed. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Juris, Betty, Peggy. We also have um, Betty's uh, family who have come to support her and to witness this very special occasion. And we're so blessed to have you here at Aloha Lava. And so uh, we're going to baptize you. And I know that through those times and those moments where life was dark, God continues to uphold and sustain us in the palm of his hand, reminding us that there is hope beyond what we experience here in this life. And so, Betty, It is a privilege as a minister of the gospel and as disciples of Jesus Christ. We would like to baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. singers to lead us with a hymn, and it is the hymn, All to Jesus, I Surrender. Um, thank you, Betty, for your testimony. That was really powerful. Um, it's a reminder of, what is it? It's The song we're about to sing is Surrender, and it's like a giving of our will to Jesus and um, and as we contemplate or think about the song and reflect on what the words say I pray the Holy Spirit will speak to your heart and remind you that he is with us and um, when we surrender he'll walk with us every day of our life so can we please stand and sing the song together To Jesus I surrender, oh, to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily.
to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Oh, to Jesus I surrender, humbly at his feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsaken, take me, Jesus, take me. Good morning. I am humbled and grateful to stand before you today. At the age of 85, I have made the decision to be baptized and am ready to publicly declare my faith in Jesus Christ. When I was young, my sister Bev taught me to pray, which I didn't understand or take seriously. Fast forward to my 70s, I became interested in learning more as I listened to Richard give Bible studies to Bev and his sisters. I learnt more about what Jesus did for us than I did growing up and attending the Ang Anglican Church. Richard invited me to attend a church in Deception Bay, and it was from there my faith grew, and I was made aware of Bible truths. However, my journey with God has been a long winding road, but being here today is a testament of to God's enduring love. Growing older has given me the gift of reflection, and as I look back on my life, I can see God's grace has sustained me through the ups and downs. Only very recently returning to Burke and Gary Church and being welcomed back with open arms by friends I had not seen in some times was so heartwarming. I am deeply thankful for the sport of this for the support of my family and thank my sister Bev, Richard, my nieces Lisa and Renee and my friends at church for their guide, guidance and love. The decision, to, the decision to be baptized at this stage of my life is my commitment to deepen my relationship with God. Where did I get to? Oh, I want to, when my baptism serve as a beacon of hope to all witness it and may if I may be a reminder that it's never too late to renew one's faith and dedicate their life to God. I want to honour God in all I do and would like to finish with Psalm 119 verse 105. Your word is a lamp at my feet and a light to my path. We are reminded in John 3.16 that God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him
will not perish, but have everlasting life. Louise, we're so glad that you have responded to the call of everlasting life in Christ Jesus. And we are so blessed, and I understand that there are family who are watching this live or maybe watch the rerun at a later date. But your whanau, some of them are here, some of them across the promised land of New Zealand are watching, and I know that they are super proud of you making that decision to follow Jesus into all of life. The word trust is, um, we live in a world where there's so many broken promises, um, but one person that I can testify is Jesus, and it's so sweet to trust in Jesus, and when you do, he'll never let you down. So can you sing with us, please, as we sing this next hymn, "Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Just to follow the Savior, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him. How I proved Him more and all. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, for grace to trust Him more. I'm so glad. To trust this just Jesus, Savior, friend, and I know that He is with me, will be with me till the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I've proved Him more and all. Jesus, Jesus. Precious Jesus, all for grace to trust Him All the time, beautiful. Today is wonderful Sabbath, and God bless Sabbath because He made all the things. He created the world, human, and everything, and God rest on Sabbath. Reason why we are here. Sabbath is the sign between people and and God. So before to invite the Connies to correct the thief and authoring, let's bow and pray. Heaven Father, thank you once again for your blessing to your church. Thank you for a great job happening today for two people who baptize. We know they were facing many attacks but 
they will be standing because of your support. We cannot fight by ourselves, but you fight in our praise. God, you create the world and everything, and you create the man, and you give us the lead of the world, and we are the accountant. For the moment, we are going not to give, but to return what you give us. Blessing everyone, blessing our tithe and offering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. While the deacons come up to collect the offering, we're going to sing through a beautiful hymn, um, Amazing Grace.
at this point of time, we're going to invite Louise and Betty to come up and uh, to face your church family. And uh, Pastor Humberto is going to offer a few words. The best and the long part is already done. <coughs> now we need just to receive them into the family of the church here. So I'm going to ask somebody who uh, proposed that, that we receive her, them, into the uh, Berpengari Seventh-day Adventist Church. Raise your hand. Who proposed? Yes. All agree? This is your family. All agree here to receive you. Now, can you raise your hand again, please? See, choose one. If you got a problem, you can... <laughs> And then you can go to them because we are receiving you. In now I'm going to invite my wife to give a present to uh, Luisa. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, you go. Please give her the bunch of flour. Go, go. Yeah. And then where is Virginia? Virginia, please for Betty. And God bless you, okay? Thank you so much. In the flowers and the leaves, but we also have these uh, discipleship packs. And Louise and Betty, you both receive a discipleship pack. And there are some little goodies in there to continue to guide you on your journey. Baptism was only the beginning of the journey, but we know that the end is when Jesus comes. Amen? Amen. And so thank you so much. You may take a seat. Before we close our time together, I wanted to share some words, and I've entitled this little message or sermonette, So You Would Come. And I remember when we were living in Ipswich, in Ipswich, when we were living in Ipswich, for some reason my oldest son came home with this little cat that followed him from the shopping center all the way home. And here is this little cat. And uh, we were trying to think, where does this cat belong to? And lo and behold, we found a little barcode on the inner ear. We rang up the vet. And we realized that the owner of this little kitten was just our next door neighbor at the back of us. And what had happened was that our next door neighbor, it was kind of like a home where those, where young people are in transition and waiting to enter into a new home. And so you would have some of these young people there for maybe five weeks, ten weeks, but there was a little girl and there was a family that was willing to take her in, but she could not take this little cat. And so this little cat was just wandering around and when our younger two came home, they go, yeah, we're going to cat, what are we going to name it? And Bronte decides to name this little cat Cuddles. And he goes, oh, can we please, can we please keep the cat? I said, Bronte, you got to do this, 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 that. And she goes, yes, I promise. You know, it wasn't that long before that promise was broken. And it was mum and dad that was always cleaning and feeding and doing all the things that pet owners love to do but there was one time and i remember it was around september because cuddles was an indoor cat kitten but every now and again cuddles would always sneak out and he's okay he's indoor and outdoor but there was one time where cuddles was no longer in the house and we're wondering where is he and so we called out his name he didn't come. Normally when we call his name, he would come rushing in. But we called, there was 
No response. There was no cuddles coming through the door. And so I remember it was Saturday. Sunday was the Sunday big setup for big camp. And I had my work clothes ready to go, and I was thinking, where is cuddles? But this time I decided to sort of go look around the house, and I couldn't find cuddles. And I just remembered I had to go and get something from the shed. And when I went to the shed, all I could hear was a... Hey, cuddles? Cuddles? And lo and behold, I saw cuddles there. But cuddles was just laying there and just laying there and wasn't responsive. Cuddles was taken to the vet. And we found that cuddles had a tick. And while I was at big camp on the Monday, I received the news while I was lifting those big poles at big camp on my shoulders. <laughs> I'll be back. My wife rings up, honey, we've had to put cuddles down. I remember that day. It was a sad day for our family, for myself, because we know that these ticks, they become family to us. Cuddles was a valuable member. I was willing to go and look for Cuddles. Has there been a time in your life where there was something so valuable that you had to go and look for it? And when you found it, were you happy? But for our family, we were quite saddened to see Cuddles in this state. We were willing to seek cuddles only to find cuddles was not well. There is a story in the Bible that Jesus was passing through Jericho. And I believe that our key text is found in Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. It is a familiar story to many of us. And if you have your Bibles this morning, I want you to flick through it. Because it's a story that we often sing, or I sang when I was a little, little boy. And you know what song is coming up. Luke chapter 10. Sorry. Luke chapter 19, I believe. Is it 19? And you know the story really, really well. And before we go any further, I'm going to invite you just to bow your heads and close your eyes. Let's just seek God one more time and acknowledge and invite. Lord, we want to thank you for what we've witnessed. We have worshipped, we have sung, we have prayed. We're coming to you one more time. Lord, I pray that you open our eyes and our hearts to what you want us to know. May you stir us and be reminded of the great sacrifice that you did for us. In Jesus' name, let everyone in the house say, amen, amen, amen. amen. Check with me, Luke chapter 19, verses 1. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through, and a man there by the name of who, everyone? Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being what, everyone? But being short in stature... He could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and he climbed a what tree? He climbed that sycamore tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. And when Jesus reached that spot, something profound happened. He parked on up and the Bible says that he looked up and he said to him his name, Zacchaeus. Come down immediately. I must stay at your what? At your home or house today. So he came down at once and he welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this. Were they happy? Mm -mm -mm. The Bible reminds us that all the people who were there, what was, it, what was going through their mind? He has gone to be with the guest of a what, everyone? Of a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and he said to the Lord, Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possession to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay not one, two, three, but four times the amount. And Jesus said to him, today, son, salvation has come to this house because this man, too, is the son of who, everyone? 
Abraham, for the Son of Man came to seek and save, which was what? Lost. Which was lost. If you understand the name Zacchaeus, it simply means pure. Pure at heart, honest, far from it, and you'll see why. But here we find in the story that Jesus was just passing through Jericho. Jericho was one of those rich kind of cities. It was only a couple of miles to the Jordan and also a couple to Jerusalem. Not far. And Jesus was passing through. It was type, Jer Jericho was a type of oasis in the desert. It was a place where these plants would blossom, love and grove, and they would smell and the aroma, would just kind of like catch your senses, your smell. Ah, oh, such a beautiful place. And as we were reminded, when we look at verse 18 of Luke, there is something that happened. And it was a healing of a particular person. Luke chapter 18, just before 19, verses 35 to 43. It's interesting because in the story, the person is not named. But you will find exactly the same story in Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. Can anyone tell me his name? Bartimaeus. We know the story. When he called out Jesus. Son of David, he cried out to him to come. You know, as movements were happening, hustle and bustle, did Jesus stop and pay attention to this man? What does the Bible say? He came to him. He came to him. And we see that when he cried out, Jesus, son of David, he says these words, have mercy on me. But we find in verse 39 of Luke chapter 18, those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. And when he came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want to do? What do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see. And Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. And it goes on to say, your faith has healed you. Can you imagine what was happening? Here is a healing. Do you think that those who were bystanders, who were watching and listening to everything that was taking place, do you think that you're just blown away? Do you think that there was much, there was chatter, there was praising going on? Because when we come toward the end of verse 43, immediately he received the sight and followed Jesus, praising God. When all the people saw it, they also praised God. It was kind of like a ripple effect. You know, have you ever been in that situation where you're near a pond and you have a little skimmy rock and you throw it and it just kind of like skims on top, but it sort of sends a ripple here we see that there is a ripple effect of praising that was going on. And it brings us to that story. I want to highlight that there were different types of people. But there's a group of people that I want to highlight called the tax collectors. They were known as traitors. They, they, they were known as publicans because they were contractors from the Romans to what? Obviously collect tax. There was all types of tax. There was income tax, import, export, property, and the number of family members. There was also, you had to pay tax for that. And here we had these middlemen who were traitors, who were looked on as outcasts. And what we know about them, they were also corrupt and dishonest people. And so when we come to the story, this character of Zacchaeus, what we know that he too was a tax collector, but he wasn't just any tax collector. He was the chief tax collector. He was the type that would wait until all the different tax collectors would go gather and they would bring back the tax to give to Zacchaeus. And it was Zacchaeus who would then give it and hand it over to the Romans. But it's interesting. We know that how he became wealthy 
you know, he would say, ah, before I give it to the Romans, I'm going to take my car. I wouldn't even be surprised if the other tax collectors were doing the same thing. So what they were giving back to the Romans wasn't the full tax. And that's how people like Zacchaeus became wealthy. He was also short. And he wanted to see Jesus. And so when we look at the story, we come into verse 19, that as he was walking, you know, Zacchaeus being so short, he could hear all the commotion, the ripple of praise that was coming towards him. He couldn't see Jesus, not only because he was short, but because of the crowd. But did that stop him? Did that stop Zacchaeus? No, absolutely not. He looked at what he could see, and what he saw was a sycamore tree. And he climbed up, and he was waiting there. Let me just highlight something about Zacchaeus. For a man to climb a sycamore tree was looked upon as childish behavior. If you were a child, you can get away with it. But here was someone that was putting himself in a position because he wanted to see Jesus. He couldn't see because of the crowd. So what he did, he lowered his pride and he decided to climb up and just wait. Can you imagine what people were saying when they saw Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus, what are you doing up there? You're a man, not a child. But yet he was willing to humble himself. And Jesus and the entourage of the disciples were coming through those very narrow streets of Jericho. But he doesn't continue. He stops. The Bible reminds us he stopped. He didn't look down. But he looked what? He looked up. And he called Zacchaeus by name. I just wonder, who was the speaker in this story? Oh, well, it's clear. Zacchaeus was seeking Jesus. But could it be, could it be, Louise, that it was Jesus who was seeking Zacchaeus? Could it be that it was Jesus that was seeking? And he doesn't just stand there, look up and say, hey, you come down. He calls Zacchaeus by name. Call Zacchaeus by name. And he says, come. He says these words, come. I must come and stay at your house. Zacchaeus was short. He couldn't see Jesus. And can you imagine all his life, people were looking down. Get out of the way, Zacchaeus. Move out of here. Bumping into him. All his life. People were looking down at him. But this was just the one time when somebody stopped, looked up at him. The only time that someone looked up at Zacchaeus was Jesus, where everybody was looking down at him. Because of the type of man that he was. Jesus was seeking but Zacchaeus put himself in a position where he humbled himself. When Jesus is walking by, we cannot be full of pride. We need to be humble. When Jesus is walking by, we need to be humble. Not only are we seeking, but Jesus is seeking you to the point where he knows you and reminds you. Reminded in Luke 12, verse 6 to 7, are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are on number. Do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. He can come to you and God knows you. He knows every single hair that is on your head. Well, for some of us, Maybe it's a little bit easier for God to count because we don't have that much hair on our head. But if sparrows is valuable, how much more valuable are you to God? And so this encounter 
that we see in this story. He says, Zacchaeus, come on down. Today, I must dine at your house. We see a God who was willing to step in, call out, and make the invitation. I've got to come. It wasn't just any type of meeting. This was a meeting that was to become a game changer in Zacchaeus' life. We don't know how long Jesus spent with Zacchaeus. But what we understand is that God or Jesus made that invitation. And somewhere in between, there was repentance and there was transformation. The Greek word metanoia. There was transformation that started to begin but continues. You don't come to a point where you are perfect in your spiritual journey. You only know this much. And as you were standing here, Betsy and Louise, you stood here and saying, I surrender all. But the reality is this. There's only so much that you think that you've surrendered. And it's not until a day, a week, or a month, you come to realize that there are still areas in your life that you haven't fully surrendered. And when you come to that point where you say, oh, Lord, you can have this room, this room, but not this room. But when you come to a point in your life, that room that you do not let anyone else into except yourself, when you allow Jesus into that room, great things happen. Would you say amen? amen. Jesus made the invitation. And what we find in that short time, he repented and there was transformation. We find here, we find here that there was a transformation that was taking place to the point, to the point where Zacchaeus says, you know what, I am going to repay everything that I've taken given to the poor. As a matter of fact, those people that I ripped off, I'm not going to only just pay, what? One, two, three, but four times the amount. You know, the law only required a certain, but we find in this story, Zacchaeus went way beyond. Because of the saving power and transformation that was taking place in his life. You know, there is a story that you're familiar with, a young, rich young ruler. When he had an encounter with Jesus, because his idea, what must I do to have eternal life? Because in his mind, eternal life was something you had to do by works. And Jesus, you know, he goes, well, you know, have you, have you kept the law? And he goes, yeah, I've, done, I've kept this, I've kept that, I've kept that, I've kept this. And then Jesus goes on to say, well, in Matthew 19, 21, if you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions, give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And then the words were, then come follow me. You know how the story ends. That rich young ruler ended up not following Jesus. Why? Because he was holding tight to his wealth and following Jesus for the law loosely. He was not willing to to let go of those things. But when you come and make a decision in front of everybody, what you're saying, I'm going to hold tightly to Christ and hold loosely to the things of this world. My relationship with Jesus is number one. But we find in the story of the rich young ruler, he was holding on to the things of this world tightly, but holding things relating to God in a loose, which he walked away not happy because he knew he wasn't willing to give up. But you today, Louise and Betsy, you've come to a point where you are hanging on to Christ. And my prayer is that you continue to hang on and you continue to hang on because there is going to be highs, there is going to be lows. Remember, baptism is only the beginning of the journey. But when we come face to face with Jesus, that's it. He's coming for people who are already saved. It's not an opportunity for us to change our mind. Oh Lord, I'm sorry, please take me. He's already made up his mind and he's coming for those 
who have already put up their hand that I want to follow you, Jesus. Today, salvation has come to this house. As a response, your response, response that Zacchaeus had to make, because he invited Jesus, come, come. And in that moment, it changed his life. When I was a kid, I was in a very smart group. And, um, and I remember one time, I remember one time where our results, our certificate for end of the year, like awards, and we call it um, school C, school fifth form. And I was growing up in New Zealand at the time, and, you know, one of the things, having two other brothers that I was living with at the time, an older and a younger, one of the things about our culture, whenever we did something good, mum and dad were happy as well. Amen? But whenever we did something bad, whoa, that brought shame not only to ourselves, but our whole family really felt the shame of what, of what we had done. So... It was coming towards the end of the, the year, and I know I didn't do too well. And I had some friends in high, high places, in high school, who managed to get hold of a clean certificate. And I was thinking, wow, this is my chance. You know, I wasn't a smart kid. I had a younger brother who was much more smarter, and, you know, there was nothing that I could do that could surpass him. So I thought, maybe this will be my only chance to put a smile on my parents' face. So being a, a naughty Samoan boy, I took that certificate and I said, well, instead of putting Ds and Fs, I am going to put As and A pluses. <laughs> and I started to put it, and it was one of those things where you put like the, the paper and you can write on it. And yeah, particularly when it came to the signature. There was no way that I was able to forge the principal's signature. I'm saying, how am I going to do this? I looked at, yeah, I can copy that. I put it on there. I started to trace. Please, kids, this was, this was before I gave my heart to Jesus, okay? <laughs> and uh, I started to forge the certificate, and then, I, then the big announcement came on that day. I said, Mom and Dad, I received my certificate. And they came. And he goes, oh, show us. And I put it in the envelope. They open up the envelope, and they looked at it. And I was kind of like smiling. And then they looked at me. They looked at it. They looked at me. <laughs> now, if you know anything about growing up in a Samoan home, I would have got a big hiding. But I think that it was just so funny to them that they just started laughing because they knew that I had cheated, that I had forged this particular certificate only because I wanted to put a smile on my mom and dad's face. Only because I wanted their seal of approval. One thing we know about God is that nothing that we can do could make him love us more. Nothing that we have ever done in the past, Louise or Becky or anybody else, could make God shut the door. That is the beautiful grace about God, that nothing we can do. He already loves us. He may disapprove of some of the things, but his love for us, you know, even though you make me angry, make me sad, but I still love you. Nothing that we can do could make God love you more. And nothing that we have ever done, no matter how dark or black it may be, could make God close the door. I want you to reflect on this statement as we invite the singers to come up. As we invite the singers because everything that God did through Jesus Christ was so that people like Louise and Becky and many more 
who have already made that decision to follow Jesus. Everything that Jesus did on the cross was so that each and every one of us would come. I'm going to invite Becky and um, Auntie Louise. I'm going to invite you, Becky, you can, you can stand next to Auntie Louise. Louise, you come and sit here. Becky, you here. I'm going to invite the singers to come through here. And we are going to sing a song that is a reminder of God's love and grace. That what he did on the cross was an invitation for us so that you would come. When you listen to the words of this song, I want you to think about where you are at in your walk with God. Maybe there are some of us who want to, when you look at the baptism and you think, you know what, I haven't, I've sort of strayed a bit. Maybe today is a time where you would make your recommitment. Maybe there are some of us here who are kind of like sitting on the fence, not quite, haven't really made that commitment. I'm not too sure where you're at, but God can see your heart. Maybe there are just some here who are thinking that they are really seeking God, not realizing that God is the one that is doing all the seeking. Throughout the song, I want you to just come. If you feel impressed by the Holy Spirit, a couple of weeks ago I made the call. If you made the decision a couple of weeks ago and you wanted just to reaffirm your decision, come and stand next to Louise and Becky. And if there are some who are wanting to make that commitment, don't allow the people in this room to get in the way of you coming. If Zacchaeus was willing to humble himself and make himself silly so that God can see him, humble yourself. Sometimes we just need to lay down our pride and say, you know what, I'm all in. God has been knocking on that door, but I've just been shutting him out Maybe this morning could be that time. We're going to sing a song, and it's entitled, So You Will Come. And if you feel impressed, just come and say, we're not going to force anybody. We're not a church that forces people to get baptized. But we encourage and we inspire people to take that step of faith. Because what do you have to lose? I want you to close your eyes, and if there is someone here this morning that would like to commit their lives to Jesus, maybe for the first time, I'm going to invite you to come up. Come to the Father, and though your gift is small, broken hearts, broken lives, He can take them all. The power of His word, the power of His love, Everything was done so you would come. Lord, as we stand here, as we stand here in your presence, as we witness this beautiful occasion of Louise and Betty giving their hearts to Jesus, we want to thank the disciple makers, Tabora, Richard, Lisa, who have been very instrumental, Lord, being your hands and feet. Imagine a church that would take up, that would take up the flag of your kingdom, of your eternal gospel, and go for all to hear and to receive. I pray that you bless our church family, bless our visitors, just as you have blessed our time. I pray that you will continue to be with Betty and Louise in their journey of life. And may we, as a disciple-making church, rise up and go. Everything that you have done for us so that we can all come 
to you. We are eternally grateful. We thank you for these things. In Jesus' wonderful and mighty name, let us all say, Amen. Well, thank you so much, church family and friends. We're going to invite uh, Louise and Betty can just make their way to the foyer. And what we want to encourage our people, once we finish, we can all go out there, give them a high five or a hug, um, and then join us for lunch. Whatever we have, we believe in miracles that Jesus can multiply the food. So whatever piece or sandwich is out there, he will multiply it. Stay fellowship. Let's continue to enjoy this time. And to our families who have come to support this, those who are watching the live stream, um, glad that you can make it and I pray that you be proud and continue to pray for our dear friends here who have made that commitment. You may go now.